everyone, welcome to this week's real estate Q&A. There continues to be much going on in the real estate market. And a lot, Melissa, everyone's waiting to see what the Fed is gonna do. The 13th and 14th, when they meet the next FOMC meeting as to whether j and company will continue to keep the real estate recession going with uh, at least stalling rate hikes or will they raise a quarter of a percent? You know, a lot of the experts believe that they will stall in this June meeting and that in July, maybe they will consider raising it again. They're off in August and then maybe in September, they'll do a reassessment. But the big thing right now is that if the Fed pivots at all, it could be catastrophic for this still almost double or more than double, I would say, inflation rate than the FOMC wants to see the 2% target rate. Right now, we're over 5%. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how he's going to re respond to that. But um, a lot of people and a lot of experts are thinking that uh, he's going to pivot. So let's hear it straight from Utah, because we did have a viewer ask, in what month or quarter will the Fed finally cut rates? I know, I know, but take a guess for us. Yeah, I would say that um, I don't see where rate cuts are going to happen at best till at least the August meeting or even beyond. It could be 2024. But again, the political pressure is hot the uh, presidential election that's coming up in 2024. You know, I'm sure Washington and company does not want to see, you know, uh, the, the market fall apart any more than what it is in shambles, just the whole economy as bank collapses have been in the media and, you know, credits tightening and things like that. The Fed's in a position saying, whoa, I got the pressure probably from the current administration saying, look, we need to bring stuff down stimulate the economy, not have any kind of more of a crash um, and uh, or recession. And, you know, hopefully that people will go, yay, everything's great. And they'll elect the existing administration back. Um, and then the Fed's going to have to say, are they strong enough to do what is necessary and keep interest rates high in order to see not disinflation, but price reduction. Deflation is what I think we need. Uh, so hopefully they're not going to do that anytime this year. We had a viewer ask, Todd, your thoughts on the recent comments Barbara Corcoran made. Curious what you think about Barbara Corcoran's comments recently that now is the best time to buy a house because prices will explode as soon as interest rates drop. So that would mean, and I love Barbara Corcoran, so I'll start by saying that. I've read her book, um, and um, I think she's a real estate mogul, but I do think that she is you know, very wealthy and maybe out of touch with everything that's going on, but the main I guess, issue at hand is the affordability issue. So if you believe that home prices are going to go up from here, you would have to believe that we're going to have massive wage growth. And I don't see that happening. I would turn to what Elon Musk has said and, you know, and, and somebody that's really invested in a lot of the solar, uh, you know, energy that's going on, a lot of the cars, the electric cars. I mean, he's very invested. So he wants to see, obviously, the economy running strong so that they can afford to make these more expensive, you know, uh, alternative energy choices uh, to keep his business going. But when you look at what he says, he says that the real estate market is going to crash. So you could take Barbara Corcoran, who says, oh, by now, the Fed's going to drop rates and then prices are going to continue to go up. Unless we saw the Fed drop the rate so much that it would be so ridiculously it would be nonsense, complete nonsense to go back into the threes and the 4% range um, for mortgages, right? I mean, it would have to drop rates almost down to zero again in order for us to see those kinds of housing rates. So if they even stayed in the sixes, which is would be a great reprieve, right? If we saw in the low sixes or even the high fives, people still can't afford the current pricing with the amount of debt that they have right now. So, you know, I I, I would say that Barbara is, um, is off track for now. We know that if you buy a house and you wait it out for 10 years, yes, prices will be going up. And who knows how long it'll be before they go up over last year's peak, uh, the peak of 2022 I'm talking about before May and June, depending on your market, uh, when we saw 20% year-over-year gains 
for the last two years. Uh, but yes, if, I think if you if if they do drop rates within the next decade, you can see you know some pretty substantial price appreciation. But that's what it will take. You'd have to stay in the house for quite some time. We know that lenders are feeling the squeeze right now because the lack of inventory. They are becoming creative in their ways to get buyers into homes. So we did have a question. Who can actually afford a house with a 1% down though? I have to put 10 to 20% minimum to make payments relatively affordable. Even then, they're still ridiculous. Todd, we know they're referring to the rocket mortgage. Yep, and that's exactly right. So if you dive into Rocket Mortgage's program, and you know I'm not a loan officer, but you can certainly Google search this yourself. Uh, you know what they're talking about is there is a grant that they will provide to where the borrower only needs to put down the one percent, and then I'm sure there's closing costs involved as well, um, and uh, the devil's in the details. But I think that. Uh, it's impractical for many people because there are also other qualifications that say that you can't make any more than 80% of the median income in the area of what you live. Um, and we know from comments and we know from basic math that if you look at that hook, and that's what it is in a lot, it's a hook to get people, you know, it's a marketing, it's advertising, it's been a way that has brought a lot of uh, notoriety lately to Rocket Mortgage. But when you look at uh, the other things that have to play out in order to get this deal, there aren't any homes in that price range uh, when you start looking at, you know, down the brass tacks. It's just, you know, it sounds good. Uh, and, and Chase just came out with a great program that they're marketing to. It sounds great. Uh, but the, the details are, you know, what you really need to focus on. Affordability, as we know, is uh, tough right now. Let's continue that conversation about lenders with loans. We did have a viewer who said, if rates stay higher for longer, are we more likely to see 40, 50 year home loans become the norm? I think 40 is definitely something that uh, we'll probably looking be looking at as our next move. There are 40 year, they're non-qualified mortgages. Um, so unless it's VA or FHA and you're in default and it's a modification product, uh, the 40-year mortgage or more 45-year mortgage is a non-qualified lender is offering that. You're going to pay a lot more for that in a higher uh, interest rate. And um, it, you, you fall out of the protection, the, the federal protections that are, you know, um, safeguarding the public with fair lending, um, you know, that puts you in a different category. Do I think that it's possible that we will see uh, qualified mortgages in a 40-year term? Absolutely. I think it might be around the corner. You know, but the risk, Melissa, is that, you know, for people, especially our young people, we know that they want to stay put less than, uh, you know, what we've seen historically as far as people buying a house and staying there for 20, 30 years. You know, young people, it's hard for them to commit to even five years or they want to be five years from now. The risk with the longer the mortgage, the longer you would need to be there to pay down your principal balance so that if prices do stagnate or go down any further than when you, if you're buying, you know, like now, um, you, will, you, you might be underwater and need to bring money to the table to closing. So you're going to be forced to stay in your house. So 30 year mortgage is bad enough. You're buying a payment very little goes to the actual principal balance in the first several years. You extend that 40 years and you're really reducing the amount that you're actually paying down on your loan. You're basically making the banks rich and um, you know, you're a, in my opinion, in a 40 year mortgage, you're a glorified renter. And, and not only are you a glorified renter, but when you fall into this category, you have to pay for all of the repairs to the home out of pocket. A lot of our viewers feel very strongly about the government handouts that we've been given over the past few years. We had a viewer make a statement. Why should the government have to step in and stop house prices from declining? What did you think would happen when you bought in an artificially inflated bubble? The government created the bubble and the Fed is pretending to fight inflation with token hikes. The only way to stop the runaway inflation is if rates go higher than the inflation rate, even if they pause, they will not stop the decline in house prices or the economy. And I am very familiar with our commenters on our channel and what this comment is 
actually uh, in follow-up to was a comment that someone in our audience had had mentioned about can the government step in and you know help with the the home prices like you know do something about the actual price of the home well i mean the bottom line here is you know we're big boys and girls and we're buying these uh, and we need to you know own up to the responsibility to what we commit ourselves to and for this reason is you know and i take this with some scrutiny on why i don't believe in bailouts at all for you know um for you know no matter what income bracket you're in i don't care whether you know uh, your business i think a lot of the um you know the the handouts uh should be eliminated and that we need to be a society that thinks about the consequences of our decisions and owns and owns up to them and lives up to them. So, you know, I'm not a real big proponent of the government stepping in at all. Unfortunately, Todd, I actually think there are going to be a lot more handouts given by the government. This isn't over. We're going to ride it through till we get on the other side. Well, you know, the thing is they're collecting so much money from taxpayers and there's no consequences for their spending. So for them to put out these programs basically buys them votes. So you're right. I would imagine that we'll continue to kick cans down the road. And until, you know, we decide that we're going to own up to what we do, we'll be just become more of a society. Uh, You know, we'll have the ones that have and the ones that have not, right? Unfortunately, we're watching that happen. Our middle class is being wiped out. And a lot of this is the decisions that we're making as voters, as, you know, just letting the administration and no matter who's in office, just do whatever the heck they want to do, right? And we just say, okay, and we buy into it. So I guess you're right. I mean, we'll continue with that. Expect more bailouts, expect more money printing, and I guess expect higher prices. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are the top questions from this week's Real Estate Q&A. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel and you want to hear more stuff like this, guys, you can do it now. Smash that alert bell. Don't keep this content all to yourself. Share it with your family and friends. Please continue to send us your comments and questions. They may just get answered on a Real Estate Q&A just like this. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Sachs Realty, Maryland Broker, number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.